Hello, this is Dr. Kevin Kirk, and today I'm going to show you some cloth dynamics. I'm actually going to make a tablecloth falling over a table. So first we'll build our table. This is just pretend it's a table, okay? So I'll just make a box here. If you have a built table that's wonderful, please use that. And I can use a regular plane for my cloth, but it usually works better if you build a rectangle. And that's under splines. So I'll do that. So I'll build a little rectangle, and that's going to be my cloth. Have to move it up, of course. So I bring that to right above the table. And that looks pretty good. So I've got the table. with the cloth above it. You can move the cloth just a little bit lower. If you have it too high, it can do some weird things. But the cloth is going to fall over the table. Now, I'm ready to set things up, so I'll do that. So with the rectangle selected, I'll turn that into a cloth. But first I have to have all the polygons within it. I could use a regular polygon and then break it apart like a plane and break it apart. But it works with the splines too if you use something called Garment Maker. So I'll modify this and I will drop in Garment Maker. Now the density, you can see, hit the F3s, F4s, so you can see this stuff. The density you can see right there. And these are where the folds and creases occur. I can increase the density, which increases the realism, but also takes more time to render. So there's a trade off there. Do whatever your machine can comfortably handle. I'll do one more. And do it about like that. It should be pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to set this up. By going into my cloth right here. And applying cloth to it. Literally applying cloth to it. So I'll click on cloth. And I'll start setting this up. Object properties is where you want to go first. Now this is a big window and you can't resize it. And I set this tutorial up so that you could comfortably see all the letters. So you won't be able to see the bottom part of this. I'll take this over to my other window too to click on OK and so forth. But the rectangle selected, I'll click on cloth that now has cloth properties. You can select various presets like flannel or silk or satin or whatever but I'll just use the regular defaults for now. So I have the rectangle, sever cloth. At the bottom it says OK. You can't quite see it from there. I'll pull it into my other window and click OK. Great, so that part's set. Same thing, object properties. I'm going to add something. I'm going to add an object, the box. Now remember that's going to be our table. So our table, we want to be a collision object. And you can just barely see it right there. At the very bottom, when I pull this up down here, it says collision object. I'm going to click that so it does turn the box into a collision object and then I will click OK to set it. So collision object then OK. When that's done I'm ready to run the simulation. Now simulate is right here. You probably want progress so you can see what's going on. You can escape that at any time by hitting the escape key. Let's see what happens. See it here? You do cancel or the escape key and there it goes. It falls pretty well on it, and it actually looks like cloth. It does a pretty good job of simulating it. Now there are other things a little more advanced, self-collision and so forth, so it won't fold in on itself. But as for now, it looks pretty good. So after a while, it stops moving, and this kind of falls like natural cloth would. So we take a look, and if you like it, great. You can change different things, move it around, and so forth. But I'll actually go with this. It looks pretty good. Alright, so when I've got this, and I like what I see, I'm going to bake it. So I can choose whichever state I want, or I can just change it. In other words, I can bake it to make it keyframe by keyframe. And I can choose whichever one I want. Or I can just right click and turn it into an editable poly right now. I think I'll go a little more complicated and bake it. So I will go in and Create keys. It says you can't undo. Yeah, all right. I'll create the keys. And it starts to do this and creates the keys down there. These are actual keyframes that it is doing frame by frame. So now instead of the simulation, I can go through this and it actually falls down. I can choose whichever state, maybe there, maybe there, maybe there. 
whatever looks best to me. I think something like that looks really good. So I'll stop there. Wherever I like it, I'll right click on it and I will convert to an editable polygon. Boom. So now it's an editable poly, which is perfect because I'll take this thing and it's set, as you can see. So now I have the object and as a final thing, I'll, create, I'll grab this box and I can delete it. You can delete the top of the table because sometimes it shows through in bits and pieces. So I've deleted that tabletop. I can build legs under here. No one knows if you cheat like that, that's fine. So I have the object. One final word, if you want some sort of material or pattern on this, on the cloth, you need to put a UVW map on first thing and then apply your surface. That keeps the colors and the patterns intact while it falls. So put the UVW map on first. All right, you've made your cloth. You're ready to export it to your scene and just put it over something really basic. And it looks like a nice tablecloth that works really, really well. Okay, enjoy.